This webinar is designed to help people get started with the Open Chain project. The Open Chain project maintains and develops Open Chain ISO IEC 5230. That is the international standard for open source license compliance. We have been working on this standard for more than five years. We have edited and released the standard. We have built supportive material, reference training slides, reference policy material, and so on. For many companies who started the journey with OpenChain five years ago, they have become quite sophisticated with using open source. But OpenChain is now entering a new time, a new era. Many companies are hearing about OpenChain for the first time. They might hear about it from their customer companies during procurement discussions, or they might hear about it from government policy in their country. For example, the Japanese government mentioned OpenChain last year in a policy guidance document. And we have now built relationships with organizations directly under the Chinese Ministry of Trade. If you hear about open chain from a customer company or government policy or from somewhere else, you may have questions about what this standard is and how you can use it. Today, we're going to address the basic idea. How do you get started with this standard for open source license compliance? Now, this is an open chain webinar. This is actually the 32nd webinar that we've done. Uh, we have bi-weekly webinars on all types of topics. A lot of our webinars are a little bit more advanced, talking about tooling or details of something like mergers and acquisitions or process management case studies in a company. However, occasionally we like to make webinars like this for people who might be completely new. And don't worry if you are new. Every person and every company started from scratch. You are not alone in this journey. And everything about this project was built by people like you for people like you. We're doing our best to share our experience so you can do your best too. Before every open chain meeting starts, we show this antitrust policy notice. Open chain is a collaborative project. We collaborate around open source. Because many competitor companies are working together, it's important to have an antitrust policy. Actually, all of the projects in the Linux Foundation follow this antitrust policy, and you can find the full version on our website. It's a way of making sure that we know how we're talking. Let's dive right into our main topic today. If you hear about OpenChain, you probably will be sent to the OpenChain website. And this will begin to explain what's going on. We are all about the ISO standard for open source compliance. This standard is designed to deal with license compliance. It's very simple, it's very short, and it's based on knowledge that has been developed over more than one decade. The standard itself was written through a period of over five years. It is written by user companies, companies using open source and managing the licenses. We make this standard available to everyone with no cost, and we support it with lots of material like online self-certification that allows companies to answer yes or no questions to check if they meet the requirements of the standard. We have extensive reference material so that companies trying to meet the requirements of the standard can get inspiration, whether they want to know about training or policies or processes, we have lots of material to help them. And of course, 
We have information about service providers if you want to hire companies or people to support your journey. Now, when it comes to our project and what we do, we try to help you understand the license compliance standard, and we try to help you begin using it. We also try to help connect you with an international community of companies and people just like you, so you can be supported every step of the way. When you first go to our website, you will immediately find information to help you do things like adopt the standard or get reference material or find out what frequently asked questions we have on our website. The information on the website is focused on the English language. We do translations of material, but our main website is in English. If you have any trouble with the English website and getting started, you can contact us and get help. But let's assume that you do understand English and you're comfortable with this website. When you look at the website, you'll find information not only about adopting the standard or getting reference material or frequently asked questions, you'll also begin to find out specific information about ways the standard can be used. For example, how the standard can be used around security or how, if you are a supplier company, you can get all of the basic information you need quickly. We also connect you immediately, oops, immediately to our community support. You can get help on Slack and you can contact us in other ways to talk with people from companies just like you. The community support is not a commercial service. It is people in companies using open source, sharing knowledge. They share the knowledge because basically it's important that everyone in the supply chain understands how to use open source. By working together, we save time and we save trouble. If you need professional paid support, you can get that through our partners. Now, I'm not going to start with something like community engagement or some specialized use case of the open chain standard. I'm going to start assuming that you're probably from a supplier company and you will begin looking at how to adopt the standard, perhaps you will begin to look at the supplier education pack, which contains everything you need to get started. Let's have a look at that page. The supplier education pack is a zip file, a compressed file containing things like our overview slides, education around basic open source, and open source training material that helps get your company ready for the ISO 5230 standard for compliance. Just like in many places around our project, this education pack is available in quite a few languages. As you can see right now, we have it in eight languages, simplified and traditional Chinese, English, French, German, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese. These translations are created by our community, so companies just like you. And of course, they're creating this to supply, uh, to give their suppliers the knowledge that they believe is important to help those suppliers begin using the open chain standard. The supplier education pack is a great way to get started, but it's not the only way. When you arrive at our website, you can simply choose to go to the adopt the standard page. And on that page, you'll begin to see a lot of information about different ways to adopt the standard. Self-certification, independent assessment, or third-party certification. We want to explain each of these things clearly, and we actually have videos to explain each of them. Whether you want to self-certify, which is your organization doing everything on its own, whether you want independent assessment, which is another organization looking at what you're doing and giving suggestions, or third-party certification where another organization does all the major work for you. We want you to have those options. To be clear, most companies self-certify. They use our web app to do that, and they're very happy with self-certifying on their own time. If you are very new to open source, 
uh, you might find that the self-certification questions are a little bit difficult to get started with, but don't worry. I mentioned that the supplier education pack, just going back to this, contains plenty of information. If you get the supplier education pack, even if you don't understand clearly what intellectual property is, even if you don't understand clearly what open source is, even if you don't understand clearly what open source compliance is, this pack will give you all of that basic information. I'm not kidding when I say it's a great way to get started. Assuming that you have that basic information, that you are ready, for example, to begin to adopt the standard, then it's a good time to look at self-certification. We have an online web app that takes the standard and turns it into a series of yes, no questions. What's interesting about this web app is that when you self-certify, you can also use that process as a way of checking your maturity in the field. You don't have to be focused on self-certifying today or tomorrow or next month. You can use the questionnaire to see what your company has already and what it doesn't. Let me show you. If you click to use our free web app, you get to a questionnaire page. This questionnaire page is available in a couple of languages, just pulling down English, Japanese, and Korean. But the questionnaire itself is available in many more. Let me sign in and show you the questionnaire. We have this protection, of course, on the website to make sure that we don't have issues with bots or hacking. When you log in and you get to the self-certification questionnaire, you'll see that it has different sections like program foundation, understanding open source community engagement, and so on. Each section contains various questions, yes or no. If you can answer yes to every question, you meet the requirements of the ISO standard. If you answer no to any question, you know that that is somewhere that you can invest time and resources to make using open source safer, quicker, and more effective. This questionnaire is available in quite a few different languages. So if you want to use it, you will find it in 12 languages. Many of these are frequently used in the supply chain, like, for example, simplified Chinese. We want to make sure that you can begin to explore open source license compliance as quickly and as easily as you possibly can. And this questionnaire is a great place to get started. If you're doing it for the first time, and if you're new to open source, for example, you may find that you answer a lot of the questions with a no. If that happens, don't worry. Every company in the world started from the beginning. They started from close to zero. As companies begin to use open source, as they begin to work on having open source compliance that's effective, they gradually improve their processes and become more and more able to use open source effectively and efficiently and making sure that intellectual property is respected. Okay, let's go back to the website. Obviously, if you are going to become open chain conformant and you are new to open source, one of the most important things will be resources to support you. And we have a special page for that. Our reference library is very, very large, over 1,000 documents in many different languages. When you go to the reference library, you will find things like case studies. If you want to see how Toyota uses OpenChain, you can do that. After the case studies, you start to get to things like reference training material. Our training material explains from absolutely zero intellectual property all the way through to how your developers can use open source effectively. The goal is that every manager, 
every executive and every programmer in your company can look at the reference training slides and get all of the basics they need to clearly understand open source licensing. We have policy template material. This is a way to make sure that all of your organization understands open source and understands what they're going to do with it. The policy is, if you are familiar with it, like Lego, you can take different parts of the policy template and create a policy suitable for your company. Companies are of different sizes in different markets. It's very important to make sure that policies or other material are suitable for each different company. Our policy template can help you do that. And of course, I mentioned supplier material. Here's one example, a supplier education guide that actually explains open source from scratch. This is in the supplier education pack I mentioned earlier, but this guide is available on its own as well to help educate people around the basics of open source if they need it. Now, all of this material begins to sound useful, but quite basic. For example, we talk about automation tooling, ways to automate open source license compliance. But there's not a lot of information here about specific tools or how to set them up. Don't worry, this page connects to many other documents on GitHub. If you are not familiar with GitHub, it is basically a place where you can store documents and store many updates of documents over time. We can put some material on our website, but because I mentioned we have over a thousand documents, we have to have a place to store all of those. And let me show you how we do that. We have a place on GitHub for material related to our project. And the reference material section contains lots of documents. Now, I realize that if you're not familiar with GitHub, this suddenly looks like a very busy web page with lots to do. But don't worry about that. The basics here are folders and files, just like everywhere else in computing. Now, I'm showing you the reference library to give you an idea that you can go to this place and click around to discover useful material. The names of different sections like case studies, checklists, flowcharts, guides, they indicate basically what you can expect to find. And I want to show you specifically how to do that to really get started. Here is an example going into our training slides section, reference material area, training slides, and then the official training slides. There are different versions of the training slides. Those actually map to different versions of our standard. If you're new to this, you always want to go to the highest version. If you do that, you will find the slides in the languages that they are translated into. In the case of the latest slides, they're in English and Italian. Older versions may be in more languages. Let's take a look at 2.0. English, and of course, we have Chinese. Unfortunately, we don't have both variants of Chinese and we don't have Japanese and Korean in version 2.0. Going back in time, you'll find other translations like Korean. And here we have simplified and traditional Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Spanish. An obvious question is, why don't we have all the translations in the latest version of the standard? The answer is what I said at the beginning. OpenChain is made by a community. Companies like you are preparing material and sharing it. Right now, with the latest version of our training slides, the version available is created by the companies that edited in English and the companies that translated into Italian. We're still waiting for translations in other languages, and we will wait for our volunteer community to prepare that. I said that we have over a thousand documents. 
We have many translations, but we don't have one unique set of translations that are always available. We know that that isn't perfect, but it's the best we can do as a global community of companies contributing time as volunteers. Anyway, if you want something like our training slides, you can go into one of the pages and you'll find different formats, in this case, PDF, PowerPoint, another version in PDF, and uh, another version in PowerPoint. Different versions, different setups are available uh, based on what we've seen in the market. In this case, let's go into one of the PDFs. You'll find the training slides for the ISO version of the standard, and you can see information, eight chapters, what is intellectual property, all the way to developer guidelines. We're not going to go through the training slides today. There's lots of slides, but basically they will guide you through the process and how to get things done. The training slides at the moment are about 80 PowerPoint slides. It's a lot, but it's not too much. And you can very easily click a download button to get the files on your local computer. Let's look at another part of the reference library. This time we're looking at a supplier leaflet. You might remember on the main website, when we were looking at resources, we found a supplier guide and we found a supplier leaflet. Looking at the supplier leaflet, which was originally created in Japan, you will find it in lots of versions and each version is easy to download in something like PDF format, I'm opening traditional, I'm sorry, simplified Chinese here, or in editable formats, in this case, InDesign from Adobe, which allow you to change the leaflet as you see necessary. Now, I wanted to touch on the fact that some of our material is marked as official and some is marked as community. In this library, we have material that the whole community worked on and decided is part of the official Open Chain Project reference material. But we also have material that was given to us by one or two companies, hasn't been edited by the whole community, but is very useful. For example, going into the guide section, we'll find a community folder, and there's guides on things like reusing software or build instructions and how to think about building or reusing software when you were considering open source licensing. That type of material is very useful and we're very glad when it can be supportive to people. The official project material, of course, can be similar. It's always focused very closely on something that we've edited across the project with the user companies contributing from all over. Official, is not better than community. It just means that the official material was edited inside the Open Chain project and the community material was contributed by one or two companies elsewhere. The last part of the Open Chain reference library I'm going to show you relates to the open source policy template I mentioned earlier. Remember I said that there's a policy template which is a little bit like Lego. It is a spreadsheet containing various different sections like roles, licenses, code acceptance, incident training, lots of material. And you can obtain it for different versions of the Open Chain standard. Just like earlier, the higher the version, the more recent the document. You can download this as a spreadsheet in open document format or Excel format. And like everything else in our reference library, you can take that document and you can edit it as you see fit. Okay, we're going to go back to the website. We covered adopting Open Chain, so self certifying or getting help. We covered resources. The last major thing I want to cover is our community. I've said now several times that Open Chain is made by user companies for user companies. 
We have bi-weekly webinars just like this one containing information to support you. They're a very good resource for learning. Looking at our past webinars, you will find 32 webinars as of today, covering everything from project management to readiness assessment to variants of different licenses. You could regard these webinars as a free online training course that just never stops. It provides new information and new insights every two weeks. Anyone can join our webinars. You don't have to register and there is no cost. These are community webinars created by community participants for the benefit of the community. Like I said at the beginning, every company using open source wants the supply chain to understand open source. Now, open chain is not just webinars. It's not just listening to things. We do stuff together, like making material for the reference library. And every two weeks, we have a global work team call where all around the world, people talk about things like our specification. That's another way of saying standard. Automotive work, tooling, education, and conformance. In other words, lots of user companies get together to talk about what's important to them at the moment. We currently host all of our calls on Zoom. And you can just enter with one click on this link here, or you can dial in, of course. The Open Chain community has an event schedule, a calendar that shows everything we're doing. And it always contains the information of how to join a call. So if you see something interesting to you, you can simply click and join. The Open Chain community is huge. We have thousands of people from many countries working together. We have global lists, which talk about the big picture. Our main community is the intersection. It's the heartbeat of everything. And it's where you find out the basic, most important information around this ISO standard, our reference material, and events around the world that support compliance. But we also have focused work groups, for example, our automotive work group is talking about how the automotive industry can do license compliance. That includes using our standard, but it also includes other discussions. For example, in automotive, there are specific discussions around functional safety or software bill of materials. They take place in this automotive work group. And just like our main work group or our webinars or our global call, you can just join a mailing list and you are part of it. Our tooling work group talks about automation. It talks about how to use tools to make open source compliance more effective and efficient. Our telco work group, just like the automotive work group, focuses on license compliance for telecommunication companies. You'll find all sorts of telecommunication companies from people making infrastructure through to people making mobile devices. Our education work group, of course, deals with education material. They are responsible for things like growing our reference library and building new resources like online training. We have a specification list. This is about editing the standard. We don't update the Open Chain standard often, but we talk about what updates would be useful in the future. And we record them so that everyone in the world interested in open source license compliance can see the future of this ISO standard and contribute to it. Several times I've mentioned our partner network. These are vendor companies that can offer paid services to support you in your compliance journey. They have their own mailing list, which they use for discussions between themselves. Uh, but it's also available if you want to drop in and ask them questions. These partners are from all over the world, and I'm sure they would be very happy to talk to you. Super important, as we approach the end, is that we have regional lists in Germany, India, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, the UK, and mainland China. We have work groups where people share information. These work groups 
are almost always made out of user companies and they are supporting each other because in their market space, they rely on the same suppliers and the same customers and they all want open source license compliance to work really well. All of these local work groups, except for China, are mailing lists. The Chinese work group uses WeChat. You can contact us to get the details of how to sign into the Chinese work group. And there you have it. OpenChain is a community maintaining the ISO standard for open source license compliance. We can help you adopt the standard. Whether you want to self-certify or get independent assessment or third-party certification, we have lots of information. You can get started by watching these videos. And of course, you can get lots of information on this website. When it comes to educational material, we have a lot. Our reference library has everything from case studies through to training material, through to policy templates, to supplier education guides. And of course, our community. I can't emphasize this enough. Companies just like you, people just like you, started their journey in open source and worked together to make everything more efficient. We all want product to market. We all want to save time. We all want to save money. And this community is the place to do it when it comes to open source and intellectual property. The last thing I want to do is to emphasize that you can always, always, always get support around the Open Chain project. You can always talk to us. You can always find ways to speak with administrative staff like myself. My name is Shane Coughlin, I'm the general manager or other support staff around the project. We are going to be able to provide you with lots more information about OpenChain and how to adopt it, how to use it. We have lots of material in our webinars that can help your journey too, around compliance with OpenChain as well. So for example, webinar 27 helps you with readiness assessment. That's a situation where a company checks how ready they are to adopt the standard. Every company has different details in how they check or why they check. Our webinar is just an example of one approach, but just like all the other information, it can help you get started. And that is where we ended today. This community is building, maintaining, and sharing the ISO standard for open source license compliance. Whether you are here because you're a customer company, mentioned open chain in procurement, or you saw open chain in a procurement contract, or you saw it in government policy, or you're simply following other policy or guidance to deal with open source intellectual property, we're here to support you. We're the highest level standard in this industry and we are the largest community in this industry. We will always point you in the right direction to find more information. And our agenda is very simple. It's the same as you. This is a community built by user companies for user companies. I do hope that you will join us with the ISO standard for open source license compliance. And I do hope that as you begin to assess it, as you begin to work with it, you will feel free to come here, look at our website, join our mailing lists, and ask a question, any question. We're happy to start from zero. If you don't understand open source, that's fine. If you're confused about the licensing, that's fine. If you have time pressure and you need to sort things out right away, that's fine. We will be here and we will support you. If necessary, our staff will guide you through things like self-certification, and we will make sure to do it as quickly and as effectively as you need. Thank you for watching this webinar. Some areas of this webinar will be lightly edited to show material more effectively, and the final webinar 
will be prepared for translation with subtitles over time. We hope to have this webinar available with simplified and traditional Chinese subtitles, Japanese subtitles, Korean subtitles, and perhaps subtitles in some supplier-centric countries like Vietnam and Cambodia as time passes. Thank you for your attention. And in a moment, you'll see a slide which will provide contact details if you have any questions.